very good morning to all. Uh, I am Kusum Parswan, Assistant Professor of Horticulture, College of Agriculture Sciences, Tithankar Mahavir University, Moradabad. So today we will discuss about the production technology of mango under the course Production Technology for Fruit and Plantation Crops with the course code of BAG417. So here we start. Mango, botanically known as Mangifera indica, belongs to family Anacardaceae with a chromosome number of 2n equals to 40. Its origin is in Indo-Burma region. Genus Mangifera consists of about 40 species. It is acclaimed as king of fruits and it is an evergreen tropical fruit tree. Mango undoubtedly deserves to be the national fruit of India. In area, production, nutritive value and popularity of appeal, no other fruit can compete with it. It has strong link with the cultural history of our country. Mango tree is a part and parcel of the rural life. Records suggest that its cultivation in the Indian subcontinent is for well over around 4000 years now. Various travelers have mentioned mango in their memoirs. Greater tribute paid by Emperor Akbar, who established Lakhbagh, which is a mango orchard having 1 lakh mango plants. Now coming to its soil requirement, mango can grow well in all types of soil, ranging from alluvial to laterated, except black cotton soil, which are considered to be poor. The most desirable soil is loamy texture, which is deep, well-drained and having a pH of 5.5 to 7.5 and a water table below 180 cm around the year. Saline and alkaline soils are not conducive to profitable mango cultivation. Now, if we talk about climatic requirement for the mango cultivation, although mango is a tropical fruit, the mango grows equally well under subtropical conditions as well. So before we move on further, let me tell you that what are tropical fruits and what are subtropical conditions. So basically tropical zones are those zones where the, uh, the climate is hot and humid and the winters are very mild. Now if we talk about subtropical conditions, subtropical zones are those zones where the climate is hot but relatively dry conditions are there as compared to tropical fruit and the winters are little severe. So mango can be grown in both tropical as well as subtropical zones. Seedling trees have been observed growing even at an altitude of 1400 meter above mean sea level but fruiting is poor above 500 meter above mean sea level. The optimum growth temperature for mango is 23.9 to 26.7 degrees Celsius. Frost is harmful as it destroys the vegetative growth. It grows equally well both under low and heavy rainfall of 25 to 250 cm annually. However, with the annual rainfall of 75 cm and above, it can be grown with little or no irrigation. Rain during flowering is not feasible for the mango cultivation. Coming to propagation and planting of mango, it can be propagated by side vineyard grafting, in arching and apicotile grafting. However, the commercial method of propagation of mango is vineyard grafting. And these different types of propagation techniques are performed in different regions of India, whichever is successful in that particular region. Now coming to planting, planting distance of around 8 to 10 meters is kept between the trees. However, before planting, we dug a pit of size 1 meter into 1 meter into 1 meter. Pit should be dug out and filled about one month, one month before planting and allowed to settle. Pit should be filled first with top soil followed by the lower soil along with 30 kg of well rotten FYM. The suitable planting time for mango is July to August. While planting, graft union should be around 8 to 10 inches above the ground level so that it does not directly come in contact with the soil surface. Now if we talk about high density planting which is now being followed in our country, high density planting help increase the yield per unit area. In North India, mango amrapali which is a variety which is a dwarf variety of mango it is found amenable for high density planting with a spacing of 2.5 meter into 2.5 meter 
High density planting basically means planting of trees at a closer spacing than the conventional spacing so that it can accommodate more number of plants per unit area. Now there are some commercial cultivars of different regions of India. So now if we talk about northern region of our country, the varieties which are most uh, grown here are Dasheri, Langra, Chausa and Bombay Green. In eastern region of India, Hemsagar, Langra, Fazli, Gulab Khas, these are the cultivars which are more famous there. Now in western region, Alfonso, Peri, Kesar, Rajapuri, these varieties are being grown there. In southern part of our country, Bangalore, Neelam, Swarnarekha, Peri, Benganpali, Malgoa and Badami are, the, are being grown. Now hybrids of mango. This important hybrids of mangoes are given here in table. The first one is Malika which is, which is uh, developed by IARI, Indian Agriculture Research Institute, Pusa, New Delhi, whose parentage are Neelam and Dasheri. The important characters of Malika is that it is a regular bearing cultivar. It has high TSS, good color, uniform fruits, moderate keeping quality. Since it is regular bearer, which means it will bear every year, it will give fruit every year. See the main problem in the mango which we often observe in northern uh, part of our country is the alternate bearing or we can say irregular bearing. Means in one year uh, the tree is bearing fruit and in the following year it is not bearing any fruit or very little amount of fruit. So the year when uh, the tree is bearing fruit that is called on year followed by off year when it is not bearing any fruit. So, Malika is a regular beer. Coming to next hybrid which is Amrapali, the special character of Amrapali is that it is dwarf in nature. So, uh, it is released from IRI again Pusa, New Delhi. Its parentage are Dasheri and Neelam. It is dwarf, regular beer, cluster bearing, small size fruits, good keeping quality. Then Ratna and Sindhu are again two important hybrids of mango which are released from fruit research station Bengurla, Maharashtra. The parentage of Ratna is Neelam and Alfonso while the parentage of Sindhu is Ratna into Alfonso. So the special character of Ratna is that it is a regular bearer and it is free from spongy tissue and fiber. Coming to Sindhu varieties, it is a regular bearer and its stone is very thin. Then other hybrids are Arka Puneet, Arka Aruna, Arka Anmol, Arka Nilkiran. These varieties are released from IIHR Bangalore, Indian Institute of Horticulture Research Bangalore. So this, uh, these hybrids, so uh, they are also regular bearer and they are free from spongy tissue. Uh, before moving to nutrient management of mango, uh, let me explain what is spongy tissue. Spongy tissue is a disorder uh, which is an internal physiological disorder in mango uh, which cause poor quality and un unacceptable of flavor in mango fruit. This fruit uh, does not exhibit any external symptom and it is generally due to the heat convection in the mango fruit. Now we discuss about nutrient management. So, uh, all the nutrients, the major nutrients, FIM which is a farmyard manure, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium are being given according to the age of the plant. For example, in the first year of age, means after first year of planting, FIM is to be given about 10 kg, 25 gram of nitrogen, 16 gram of phosphorus and 60 gram of K2O uh, in the first year of the plant. Then, Gradually we increase this dosage till 10th year. After 10th year we get the full dosage of all the nutrients be it FIM, nitrogen, phosphorus or potassium. 10 year and onwards we give 100 kg of FIM to each plant, 250 gram of nitrogen, 160 gram of P2O5 and 600 gram of K2O to every plant. A mango beer, two types of Class, uh, one is male and another is hermaphrodite or bisexual. So obviously uh, the fruits are formed by the hermaphrodite class. 
So uh, moving towards uh, a major problem in mango which we often see is the fruit drop. Fruit drop is uh, means dropping of fruit at the very early stage of the fruit formation. So around 0.1% of the flowers only bear fruit. So uh, fruit drop is a major pro problem and which can be reduced significantly by regular irrigation during fruit development period. But the major remedy for controlling this fruit drop is the spray of 20 ppm of 2,4-D which means 2 gram of 2,4-D in 100 liters of water and in the last week of April or in the last week of May in Langra and Desheri have been found effective to control this fruit drop. Training and pruning in mango. The mango being an evergreen plant hardly needs any pruning. The only pruning that it requires is periodical removal of dead and diseased branches as and when noticed. Training, however, is an essential practice in the initial two to three years. This is done with a view to provide a good framework so that the branches are spaced properly and do not break with the crop load at the bearing stage. The branches are not encouraged too low on the trunk or too high from the ground level. Now, harvesting and yield of mango. So the criteria for judging the maturity or we can say the maturity indices for uh, the mango is the slight color development on the shoulders of the fruit or you can observe the maturity when one or two ripe mango fruits fall from the plant naturally which is also called tapka method and the third method through which we can judge maturity of the fruit is when the specific gravity of fruit ranges between 1.01 to 1.02. In general, fruits mature between 90 and 120 days from the fruit set stage. The average yield from full bearing tree is 200 to 600 kg per tree. Now packaging and storage. Grading is done according to size and appearance of the fruits. Now packaging, packaging can be done in bamboo basket wooden crates and CFB boxes which are corrugated fiber board boxes. We can store mango at a temperature of 13 degrees Celsius with a relative humidity of 85 to 90 percent for around 3 to 4 weeks. Uh, thank you for listening to me. I hope uh, the mango cultivation package and practices is clear to all. Thank you.